We are gearing up for summer beach season in Worcester County when thousands of visitors will make their way to Assateague Island to hang out with the world famous wild horses. It's always good to get a pre-season refresher on how to behave around the wild horses. With me today is Allison Turner of Assateague Island National Seashore. Hi Allison. Hi. Good to be with you today. So the first thing I want to ask about is just tell us a little bit about the wild horses. Well they're free roaming wild horses. Um, they can go anywhere they want on the island. There's no uh, no fencing, no, no pastures. Um, so they eat so. wild food here, you don't feed them, you don't provide veterinary care. They're just really wild animals. Right, right. Allison, about how many wild horses are there on the island right now? We have 82 on the island right now. And what is and like the maximum size of the herd at its, at its most animals? Uh, our goal is to keep the, the herd at 80 to 100 individual horses and that's to reduce the impacts on the environment out here. Okay, and so there's really not that many. Right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I come here with my friends and they look at the horses and they say, oh, they look so tame and friendly. What are they really like? Well, tame does not mean uh, that they're safe to be around. Right. Um, it doesn't mean that they're domestic horses. Um, they are just not afraid of people and that's a big difference from being tame. They can be quite aggressive around each other, right? Yes, they can. They're very social animals and they, uh, they can, uh, on occasion, they can fight for position in the herd. Stallions will fight all the time to um, try to steal another stallion's mares. Wow. And so you need to keep a, a, a good distance from them if this is going on. This is not and a petting can, zoo. <laughs> right, and it can happen at a moment's notice. Uh, you don't always know when it's coming. Okay. And um, so you'll see all the natural wild behaviors of horses. So I've read that you're supposed to stay at least one bus length away. Why is that? Uh, the idea is to keep people far enough away that they're not at risk of getting bitten, kicked, trampled if the horses spook. Mm -hmm. um, if they just decide we've had enough of you being close and they may want to come over and bite you, they just because they're ignoring you at the moment doesn't mean that they're, you're not stressing the horse in some way and it, at times um, they may decide they've had enough of people being close and you want to be far enough away that you're not uh, interfering with what the horses are doing. Let them go about their business, do their natural behavior without interference by humans. So I'm sure that some visitors see the horses and they think, oh, I'm just gonna give them a little snack or a drink of water, I'm gonna help them out. Why is that right. a bad idea? Yes, not good. There's plenty of food and plenty of water for them on the island. And um, the biggest problem is not even what's being fed. It's not even good to pull up a, a, a handful of grass that the right. horse would normally eat. That's not even good. The idea or the problem is that when um, they're getting food from a human hand, mm -hmm. they learn to expect it and they can be aggressive about it. The next mm -hmm. person who comes along um, may not realize that. They're just looking at the horses. The horse walks up to them, no food, they get bitten. So right. it's. Um, but yeah, then also, it's, it's if, they eat, if they eat human food or pet food, that can also have devastating effects yes. on the horses themselves, right? Yes, yes. Uh, definitely pet food. It's too high in nutrients for a horse. Uh, uh, apples and carrots, again, we feed them as treats to our domestic horses, but it's again, it's not good when it comes from human hands or if they find it near, uh, human, um, uh, near a car, mm -hmm. near the road. Um, a lot of problems with it, but the biggest problem is the behavior changes when okay. they begin to expect it and horses are opportunistic so if they see that food there they're going to eat it in a way it doesn't I tell my mean they it doesn't mean that they need that food right it's I, just opportunistic i tell my so. friends it's sort of like i remember as a kid learning about bears in yellowstone just on right. television shows it's sort of the right. same thing you don't want the bears mm -hmm. coming up the station wagons yeah. begging for food and the horses mm -hmm. are kind of the same way right right and they can be dangerous they're five like six seven hundred pounds yeah um that's it's a large animal okay so acid is a really fun place mm -hmm. to go walk your dog can i walk my dog around mm -hmm. the horses well, you want to keep uh, yourself and your dog at least um, a bus length away, at least 40 feet, longer if necessary. Especially if you're, some dogs are going to be excited when they see the right. horses and if they start barking and lunging against their leash, you want to back off. There and that's are times a good point. you want to be even farther away. And they have to be and leashed. Yes, uh, at least, uh, or uh, no more than a six foot leash and, okay. at all times. Um, okay, keep your dogs. And for the safety of the horses and the dogs. Right, keep your okay. dogs and yourself safe. Right. So if I'm on the beach at my campsite and the horses come up to me and start sniffing around my cooler or my beach blanket, mm -hmm. what should I do then? Well, um, because we do have free roaming wild horses right. on Assateague, you always want to be aware. Um, they are here, they could show up unexpectedly. So if you do see them approach, um, just back off. It's, it's not a good idea, it's not safe to try to chase them away. If they're um, you know, zoning in on something that looks like food to them, it could be a bag, it could be a cooler. 
um, they're, again, they're not afraid of you and you could get bitten or kicked or seriously injured if you try to, to get the horse to go away. So it's better to just back off and if you have your cooler properly locked up, you won't be able to, the horse won't be able to get into it and get okay. your food. All right, so when you go to the beach, typically you have a cooler with your food and drinks inside, whether you're camping or out by the ocean. And you can see it's real easy for a horse, this guy right here, if you did kick this or sniff it, the lid can pop off, out come the contents, and then you've got a horse eating your food. So I just learned of a really cool way you can keep your cooler locked and keep the horses safe. So this is a really simple thing, just a cooler chef. You can get these actually for free at the park right now. And it's just a way to kind of lock that cooler tight. This old cooler doesn't have like a, a, a lock built in. So by strapping that tight, it makes it hard for the horse to get in there and you can't get your marshmallows for the campfire. So Allison, we live in selfie culture, right? Everybody yes. that comes asks if he wants to get a picture with the ponies. So is there a safe way to do that? Definitely at least 40 feet away, at least okay. a bus length. And you can get a great picture and maybe even get a, um, a whole band of horses grazing and doing their thing right behind you. So right. you can still get a great selfie without being right up next to them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, you don't want to get attacked by yeah, our pony yeah, friend here. Yeah, don't want to do that. Um, so yeah. the rule is a bus length mm -hmm. away, yes. don't feed them, don't give them water, but come to Assateague, enjoy the wild horses, mm -hmm. and uh, just keep yourself and your pet safe. That's it. Allison, thank yes. you very much. You're welcome. Good talking to you today. So follow the rules to protect yourself and Assateague's wild horses when you're traveling Maryland's beach and beyond.